Our Jonathan Jones is out at Cardinals camp with head coach Jonathan Gannon. Jonathan Jones, CBS Sports, right here beside another Jonathan, Arizona Cardinals head coach Jonathan Gannon. JJ, thanks for taking the time. Thank you for having me. Spelled the right way, too. Spelled the right way. That's right. The biblical way. Uh, the only way. <laughs> uh, you are in your second year as head coach of this team. What did you learn specifically about yourself from last year? Trust your instincts, you know, trust your instincts. So we got good people in place. Um, I lean on those guys for a lot of decisions and ultimately I got to make the final decision, but trust your instincts. And um, it's been a fun process, a lot of carryover from last year, you know, um, didn't lose a lot of people, which was cool. So uh, we worked on our game this off season. Hopefully we improve for the players and uh, let it rip now. When you say trust your instincts and how quickly you say that, I imagine a few examples come to your mind. Yeah, yeah, I do. I mean, like uh, everything from scheduling, when I, when I look at the schedule, ah, is this right, you know? Or uh, it could be to with Monty and I, hey, you know, who's going to go in the game? Who's up on game day? This and that. Ah, is this right? You know, so I think uh, if you got all the, the variables that you need to make a correct decision and you take emotion out of it, normally your instincts are right. Last year, um, you know, in terms of wins and losses, a bit of a challenging year. But I think a lot of people more or less kind of expected that externally because of where this organization and franchise was at the time. But eight one-score games you guys were in. 75% of your wins came against playoff teams. Mm -hmm. Is there a resolve maybe that you all built last year that can that you all can kind of take and carry into this season? Yeah, I do. I think, you know, that's why I told our guys the record is not acceptable. That falls on me. Um, but when we played the ball that we can play, we can play with anybody, beat anybody. I believe that, and they believe that. I think you showed it. So I think from now, it's that's we have to play that way consistently. But what did show up, what you're talking about, you know, those close games and things like that, you know, one or two more plays, maybe you get a couple more wins. But I think I was very happy with uh, how we established our mode of play. So, you know, trying to play pretty smart, um, effort, intensity, hitting, uh, finish all those things. It's still a game of football, so I want to make sure that stays right, and the locker room will make that be right. You made some uh, some headlines the other day when you said that you commissioned a study on momentum. Before we get into my <laughs> own personal thoughts about momentum, uh -huh. tell me about what went into this study on momentum and well, why you did it. Yeah, so as a staff, you know, we talk a bunch, and and you hear it that word tossed out a lot it's in a lot all in football. different in football in tennis and golf and everything right um in the stock market you know <laughs> so i i just i said you know what let's let's do a little study on it you know what i mean and that's you know see if we can find some answers and maybe you know we use it with the team maybe we don't um i know what i think um but uh it's that's not to push on other people what i think you know what i mean so uh, <laughs> you talk about it like it's a religion um <laughs> it kind of it, it, it kind of is <laughs> kind of is what we found out but no it's 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 a cool thing I, I believe in confidence so if you go execute at a high level and you see results positive results i think that can build mm. do i think that a win versus pittsburgh carries over into this year's training camp or at buffalo no i do not yeah so that's why I, you know, kind of said what I said. Well, it's brave of you to say that uh, publicly because I also don't believe in momentum. There we go. I, I there mean, go. I want you know, I want us to be together, the two Jays here. <laughs> but no, I mean, I, I feel like it almost it, it leaves everything to fate at that point. Like momentum is this force that we yeah. can't. It's so powerful that we have no power over it, yeah. right? We tell a cornerback, hey, forget about that bad play, move on to the next. Well, if you tell a cornerback that, then don't yeah. you have to? also Correct. not believe in momentum there's there i i think you know what i mean but again whatever you want to think to help yourself that's okay too you know what i mean so our guys know right now we got our head down we're putting in the work trying to get better every day trying to gel as a unit as a team uh up our game as individuals and then hopefully when we take the field week one we're playing as a team and as three units and as individuals confidently yeah i think that's what carries over but you got to put in the work all the talking about it it's really just honestly a waste of time you got to put in the work put your head down and get better speaking of confidence and speaking of putting in the work i remember talking to you 12 months 18 months ago when you took this job and you were confident in kyler murray yeah 
And I think the way that the second half of the season played out with him proved a lot of that confidence. Mm -hmm. What have you seen from him since then? How has your relationship grown with him and how has he grown as a leader? Yeah, what I've seen from him, you know, especially now after the season ended was he put in a lot of work and he's been healthy, healthier than when than he was when I got here, obviously, you know, more farther removed from his injury. So um, the the maturation of you know being in OTAs and off season program and now training camp, I think we're we're moving at a pretty good pace with him right now. Um, I always knew that he had leadership qualities and he's demonstrated those above and beyond since we've been here. Cool. Um, I know that in my mind what he is as a player, and I think he's continuing to grow to that. And I think he's going to show the world what he really is. You know what I mean? And I know he's a good player. I don't say it like that. I think that his best ball is ahead of him. In 2020, he averaged about 50-ish rushing yards per game. Mm -hmm. The last couple of years has been hovering around 30 mm -hmm. rushing yards per game. He's back from the injury. I know he feels 100% healthy. Are we going to see a, a Kyler Murray that's running around a little bit more like in 2020, or is he now an old man yeah, and he can't? If you ask him, he ran around uh, two days ago, and I think uh, his anaerobic uh, um, conditioning isn't where it needs to be when he takes off and runs 35 yards and then has to get back in the huddle. But yeah, we understand that's, chest was that's part of the chest bit. was pounding a little bit and left one short the next play. Uh, I was winded. Really? You know I mean, oh yeah. So uh, that takes a toll on anybody. Yeah, you know it was like I mean? you so, walking up these stairs that's over right, here earlier. I could barely get up the stairs after a leg workout. But uh, <laughs> it's um, I'm excited for him because that is part of his game. And Drew understands, and Clayton, and the whole offensive staff, we understand that that is a threat that is hard on the defense. So, um, and I'm not just talking about off schedule plays, moving around on throws in the run game, too. You know what I mean? And whether he's reading somebody or he's keeping it or just the threat of him being able to pull it and run around the defense. I mean, we have to use that to our advantage. And that's scary since you guys had more 200-yard rushing games last year than any other team in the NFL. On that, though, you need to be able to get the football through the air. Yes. Uh, you go out and draft Marvin Harrison yeah. Jr. What have you seen from him? Looks great. I mean, he's, he's very consistent right now. He's self-aware. Um, he's working on his game. But, you know, as far as being able to get open and catch the ball, he's doing a good job right now. So um, just like all of us, he has a long way to go. But I've been very pleased where he's at getting acclimated into the offense, the timing and rhythm aspect of where he needs to be, when he needs to be, what Kyler is looking for. Um, he's doing a really good job. You're a defensive coach. I've taken too long in this interview to finally ask you about the defense. It was a group last year that needed to get to the quarterback a little bit more mm -hmm. and more consistently and, and affect the passer more. How is this group going to affect the quarterback more yeah. in 24? I would think that, you know, some of the added pieces that we added in acquisition this offseason, I think that's going to help for the first part. Second part is the guys that are coming back, I think they're going to take a jump in their games. But the third part to me that not a lot of people talk about with my background is rush and cover go together. So I think for the rush to be a little bit better, we have to cover a little bit better. So that's been a, that's been a big emphasis for us. Um, to make sure that all 11 pieces are coordinated because you can have a great rush and beat your guy in two and a half seconds, two seconds, and the ball's out and it's kind of a wasted rush. Um, so pressuring the quarterback, affecting the quarterback, I'd like to say, uh, that's all 11 guys, rush and cover, cover and rush, disguise, what we're doing, are we winning our leverages, are we on the right people, um, are we denying the ball, um, all those things to allow the rush to make it happen. I know it's any given Sunday and everybody respects their opponent. I felt last year, you guys, the way that you played, maybe sometimes surprised opponents, that there mm -hmm. were some external expectations about the 23 Cardinals and that you came out there and said, no, no, no here's who we really are. Mm -hmm. You guys going to sneak up on anybody this year? I, no, I, I think I'm worried about us. When we get off the bus, our mode of play has to be right. So, and um, if, if that part is correct and consistent and execution takes a jump up, I think we can play with anybody. Excellent. Jonathan, thank Gannon, you thanks so much. Jonathan with Jonathan. And man, they're going to have to come off the bus ready to go. Look at those first six weeks. Bills, Rams, Lions. Dang. Then the Commanders. 49ers. Then 49ers, Packers. <whistles> Not going to be easy. Get him any love to the Chargers? Uh, or the Dolphins? Yeah. Or the Bears? Eh.